Best video ever made, I've been told by the chat. This is Para Gaming, the best and most fun builds to play in Season 6 for Vessel of Hatred. It's finally time. Time to start powering up with the best builds for the new season Over while 9, we wait for the new path of Exile expansion. But not only that, as per usual, I'll also present you with some... Wait, who is all waiting for Path of Exile 2 expansion? ...fun yet strong alternatives that you can play. Because spoilers, D4 is still a fucking game, and you can play games to have fun. Most of these builds are played yes. in mid to end game, so you'll need to invest more time it shouldn't than just feel booting like up the game before you can play them. We have a buttload of builds to go through, so let's head straight for everyone's favorite. I love this guy. The shit smearing barbarian. All right, done with that one. Let's take a look. <laughs> okay, we put it in the trash and we're done. No the way. The shit smearing barbarian. All right, done with that one. <laughs> let's take so a look bad. at an actual class, shall we? And the one you're most likely here for, the spirit kuma. First build we have is also the highest clearing most broken build known yet. From Ace. Ace of Spades Touch of Death build. There's just Hell no yeah. way of getting around it. This build is legit broken. Ace had Able the best speed character. speed run tier 100 pits, which is the old pit 200 by the way, and slapping all the way to pit 115 in what is far from optimal gear. I reckon this could be one of the most popular builds in the game. And why is it so goddamn broken? Well, it's quite simple, really. It's a new class, so there is an extra zero added to each <laughs> multiplier. The class... It's simple, guys. Blizzard makes a new class. It just has an extra zero. 10x stronger than all the other classes, man. ...has to sell more expansions. It's, it's an easy marketing decision, guys. If the class was weak, no one would buy it and everybody would complain. Class is OP, and here we are. Live me. All right, let's just take a look at a random aspect. Typically... You'd expect between 20 to 60% maximum for an aspect. Here is redirected force, granting a 1.4 multiplier. Should make sense now. That's pretty good. Either way... Meanwhile on Bob, you don't even have 10% multiplier. Let's take a look at some ways this build utilizes these broken mechanics. For starters, the bulk of the damage comes from Touch of Death and the Rod of Kepeleke. What this does is that it takes all of your resource, which is called Vigor, and busts out a massive hit. Just imagine you'd have this item on a barbarian. And it will truly become massive, hitting upwards of 10 billion after the stat squish. Up now the here's the thing, Touch of Death is not a core skill. But fortunate for us, all you need to do is pick up a skill point, and it is. Hell this yeah. also allows us to benefit from a buttload of core skill multipliers to deal massive amounts of damage. This is the highest DPS build in the entire game. I was able to hit for 30 babillion damage with this one. Um, this is like one of the hits here. I also have a full build guide on this and uh, yeah, it truly has an extra zero compared to the other class. Here's a 30 babillion damage hit. The downside of this, though, is that it also makes Touch of Death cost a shit ton of resources. But fortunate for us, it's easily solved via one item. Yeah, you guessed it, the fucking rod does everything. Yep. And when the passive blows your fully stacked vigor, you have the Midnight Sun Ring to instantly regenerate it all. Easy peasy. And this is still the old tutup. It's gonna give you 50% resources. Slapping on a basic skill tag onto your touch of death via the rod. I mean, Rod Ferguson renamed the strongest item in the game after himself, yes? Rod of Kepeleke. This is Rod Ferguson's item, maybe. Sounds, <laughs> along with getting some additional skill ranks. Pretty balanced. The rest of the rot. interactions, though, are quite simple. Kepeleke. Big damage good, and big damage equals big dick. But considering you're probably new, to the Spiritborn class. It's so simple, guys. Let's take a look at all the skills that Ace is utilizing to maximize damage, our damage. Big D. First out is the Hunter. It's the massive Jaguar that you're seeing every now and then. This is used for a buttload of big hecking dam. By grabbing Harmonious Hunter, you're doubling your damage against injured enemies. And by combining it with Exalted Hunter, you'll reset the ultimate constantly as long as you're killing shit. It's also You're granting you ferocity, which is another resource type which you can use 
to buff your attack speed along with utilizing some additional multipliers in the skill tree. Next skill is Saw, which is not only what all the other classes were feeling after Blizz fucked them over in the patch notes, but it's also what this- I mean, a lot of classes got truly fucked, man. I mean, you saw the barb being uh, thrown in the trash can uh, earlier in this video. Lightning Spear got nerfed. Whirlwind Rogue got nerfed. We don't even have to talk about Whirlwind Barb. It's way worse than the Rogue. They nerfed the Landslide through it. Basically, they made sure that Spirit Bond is crazy. This skill is called. This is the mobility bird, allowing you to fly all over the place and drop a wet turd on your enemies. <laughs> this is also your main way of applying vulnerable. The freest build of them all, After man. that, we have all the other classes we're feeling after Blizz fucked them over in the patch notes, but it's also what this skill is called. This is the mobility bird, Dude. allowing you to fly all over the place and drop a wet turd on your... <laughs> this is the face of all the other classes. <laughs> After the last patch notes, man, the spirit born is flying sky. <laughs> man, just imagine you're just minding your own business and then there's like an eagle. I mean, I don't know, like this is like a buttload of crap that he put on this guy. What the fuck? Your enemies. This is also your main way of applying vulnerable. After that, we have armored hide. Not only is this usable right for the aspect I mentioned earlier, for the 1.4 multiplier, but it's also massive for damage reduction. It grants you resolve, which basically translates to damage reduction, and it also grants you block chance. Balanced. Counterattack grants you crit damage and dodge chance, both via the skill tree. And finally, Ravager is used for damage, and it has a skill node where it turns your core skills into a dash. Along it's with really boosting good. your vigor generation, Spirit Bond has crazy mobility. When it comes to the gameplay, you constantly teleport. You're basically just pressing all of your buttons on cooldown, and get out as many touch of just death as possible. Do smash that, all buttons. and you'll delete all content the in the game. In there are, of course, a lot of yep. more important interactions that can be of interest. You'll find Ace's guide in the description, along with guides to all the builds in this video. I'll also put them for the next build. Let's take a look at what Beavis the German Barbarian has been cooking for. Wait, who is the German Barbarian? Who is this guy? Beavis and Butthead? Thanks for the five gifted. What? For the next build, let's take a look at what Beavis the German Barbarian has been cooking for us. This guy. Oh, well, I guess it's Beavis the Spirit Kuma now. Basically, all the interactions we just talked about are also utilized in this build. The biggest difference is that you're utilizing Quill Volley instead of Touch of Death for Big Dam. This skill in itself also makes enemies vulnerable, which doesn't force you into shitting on your enemies as a bird to do it. The main benefit playing this build over the other is rather simple. It's sexy as fuck. The build that is. It's free. But the German guy is a baddie as well, I'll give him that. While the build may be slightly weaker, but the German guy is a Baddie as well. <laughs> Whoa, man, it's like one frame, dude. What? He did not put that image there. Let me go back frame by frame. I do not look like that. I don't. Hello? What the fuck? <laughs> you, what you do? <laughs> when did I get this smile, man? Kind of twins. Corporate needs you to find the difference between these two pictures. They are the same. <laughs> he was in butted. He as well, I'll give him that. While the build may be slightly weaker in pushing, it sure as hell is visually appealing. I'll probably start gaming this one. When it comes to damage, apart this from- This is the best build to start with. I'm gonna put the build guide in the description. There's an end game and a leveling build. This is the eagle, the American born, the freest build of them all. The multipliers we mentioned in the last build we're also rocking the rebounding Jeez, aspect to, to double the amount of feathers we shoot out. This along with advantageous quill volley allows us to bust out 16 of those bad boys each time we press the button, which is a fair sum of volleys. Watching the Beavis gameplay, you can see that each of these volleys are hitting for a few hundred million. Oh, so I think it's safe to say that this build will be dealing a buttload of Billions of DP billions of damage. Pretty balanced, I must say. Another change from the previous build 
is that it's also rocking Scourge instead of counterattack for even more damage and lifesteal, basically turning you into an immortal god. All right, those are the top two builds that Gods. are out currently. I'm excited Gaming. to see what builds the community manage to cook as the game launches, and it's not just a few people theory crafting the class, it could be fun. Heading into the next class, we have yet some additional amazing builds. Because this class is looking <laughs> fine as hell, and it's the rogue. And first out is Crafty's. <laughs> Look at this guy, he's having class the is best looking time. looking fine as hell, and it's the rogue. It's the piss rock. And first out is Crafty's urinator. Because who doesn't like pissing on your enemies? It goes freestyle. <laughs> this build was playable in Season 5 as well, where it was the highest pit-pushing build in the, the game, drunk and piss apart rogue. from one or two sorcerer builds, and it's still looking to be fine as hell. You spray all and around. it's all about rapid fire, baby, combined with the precision key passive stacking up a shit ton of critical strike damage and blowing everything up. The only item you truly need for the build to work is the scoundrel's kiss. The as it turns your piss. rapid fire arrows into an explosive urination. Piss. So go kill the perverted bat, aka Take Lord Zeer, and get blasting. <laughs> now the main complaint of this build oh, no. is that it was never console friendly and hard to play for the dog shit newbies. But here is the good part. This gameplay is from console. console because gaming. Crafty has actually crafted a rapid fire build that is fully playable by dog shit console users. <laughs> Why is he bullying dog shit console users? Chat, what the hell? I'm playing on my smart fridge, okay? We're playing on our Samsung refrigerator. Uh, there is leaked gameplay somewhere here. This is uh, me and <laughs> Elon Musk <laughs> playing Druid on the smart fridge <laughs> in the next season. You should ask and watch Rex and Rex's tier list and ask Rex about it. <laughs> yeah, this is it, guys. This is it. <laughs> this is how the Tinder profile that you swipe <laughs> on looks like. And this is when you meet your date, IRL. <laughs> Just <laughs> oh, lovely. Man. One of the reasons as to why this particular version is lovely is that it utilizes poison imbuement. This is easy as hell to reset as you have built in cooldown reduction in the spell itself, and all you need to keep it up permanently is one poison imbuement temper somewhere on your jewelry. Fair I gaming, guys. Personally, I typically slap it onto my left nut. He's pissing. Oh, yay! On top of that, though, while the regular rapid fire build relies entirely on crowd control, this version does not. And why is that? Well, shit. To make the build easier and more consistent. It doesn't matter if one of your rapid fire fucks off to Uganda, you can just send out another one. <laughs> but hey, Mr. Para Gaming, Big Dick China. Senpai, what about the trick attacks passive? Big D that Senpai. That requires you to crowd control enemies, and it's absolutely broken. So how do we keep that up? Well, damn my man, by utilizing the repeating aspect and allowing demons to fuck you from behind, <laughs> the passive bugs out and lets you keep it up permanently without you actually killing the Man, enemies. Para Gaming just always has the perfect balance of jokes and really useful information, guys. Like, it's really good, man. You're learning a lot here. Hell yeah. When it comes to the gameplay, it's silky smooth. It's the only combo points build on this tier list, which some people love and some hate, which is fair. Personally, I love combo points as it's a core mechanic of all rogue enjoyers. All you do is get three combo points by using a basic skill, which is either Puncture or Heart Seeker in this build, and you then blow shit up. There are also a lot of ways in which you can maximize your damage in this build, allowing you to benefit a whole lot by being a skilled gamer, so it's a rewarding Gamers. build in that way. Correctly placing your traps and evading at the correct still time, pissing at the you can definitely double your damage output. All right, and next up, we have what will be a fan favorite. The spin to win rogue build. Basically, this is a whirlwind barbarian build. This is better than any of the barbarian builds. And that is so sad. Not for the rogues, but for the barbs, man. Like, barb is like the spin to win class, and like it's just worse, and it got nerfed. With the difference of being 10 times stronger. So, if you've got any interest in spinning this season, 
then I'd probably go with this in case you're also interested in winning. Yeah. The basics of this build is that on it the barb you can spin, but you can't win. If you want to spin to win, you play rogue. Looks solely through Sad. the victimized key this. passive. Hurts. This passive has changed a gazillion fucking times already, so let's take a look at how it actually works now. For starters, it's a lucky hit skill, meaning you need to get a lucky hit for it to work, and we will therefore stack a buttload of lucky hit chance. When it procs, it then has a 50% chance to actually do something. That's the first part. If it then actually does damage, it will do 60% damage. Okay, Mr. Para, gaming big dick senpai, no. and what the hell does that mean? Well, shit. To make it simple, just see it as a new skill, Shh. because it's been decoupled from whatever skill you trigger it with. For example, if you get a lucky hit with barrage or penetrating shot doesn't matter, they will do the same damage. Investing additional skill ranks also doesn't matter because Victimize is basically a skill in itself. It's an I think it's one of the coolest passives in the entire game, actually. Like, I wish Barbarian or other classes had passives like this that basically, like, have its own scaling. Annoying ass passive. Just Meanwhile, on Barb, they just had to giga nuke all the key passives. No, that additional skill ranks doesn't help. Anyhow, you can then scale Victimize further, which you mainly do via a buttload of vulnerable damage, and everything else you do is just to gain as many lucky hits as possible. The new skill dance of Knives is excellent for this, shooting out blades all over the place. On top of that, though, you're now also able to turn Victimize into whatever damage multiplier you want. For example, here, we are turning it into Let's a go, poison in skill, there as we will be able to keep poison imbued Dude, I want to play this on my bar. Which in turn allows Please. us to utilize a buttload of additional multipliers this looks so much for non-physical damage. Finally, Look at the monster just we can't everywhere. forget the most important Crazy. part about this build, though. It's fucking brain dead. Just hold down the Dance of Knives button and you'll delete everything in the game. People just love these kind of builds, man. You know, like, hold down one button, kill everything. I mean, maybe they don't have a straight face like this guy, but you know, it's easy. Hold one button. Just hold down the Dance of Knives button and you'll delete everything in the this game. This is what people want. Man. Next up, we have yet another. Especially some of us barbarians. The victimize build. This time it's the barrage version. This was my favorite build on the season six PTR, and I reckon it will be your favorite one as well. After you're done playing the spirit born, that is. The build works quite similar to that of the spin to win mm. version. You're still stacking as much one. lucky hit chance as possible Thanks and try point. to attack as frequently as possible. And holy shit, are you able to hit frequently. There are just arrows all over the goddamn place, man. Just listen to this. Hell yeah. Each barrage you send out in turn shoots out 10 arrows. But these arrows are also ricocheting both due to enhanced barrage and well, the branching like a ton of volley aspect. Build. The main downside of Barrage, though, is its low lucky hit chance. Guys, the Druid already ate good. He became a refrigerator. The Rogue is still eating good this season. But you know what does not have a low lucky hit chance? Damn right, Poison Imbuement. With each Barrage, you're able to send out a buttload of victimized procs, each dealing up to a billion damage. Now be aware, though, it has since this gameplay been a stat squish. But the gear used in this gameplay was also complete dog shit, so we're all good. When it comes to the gameplay, you're mainly just be spamming cool out barrages. The rest of the skills are used for mobility and damage bonuses, and it's both excellent for at pushing and, and speedrunning yes. content. I can highly recommend this build. For next class, we have a build for all the cringe lord neckbeard aka the necro enjoyers here we go guys the cringe lords i must say this class is actually looking fine as hell this season minions are also good. and it has three builds that i want to showcase the first one being one of my absolute favorite builds the blood wave bonus yeah, spirit nice build deal. the interactions making this build work are just fantastic for starters all the and damage in this billions. build comes from bonus spirit 
that we're not casting the skill. Hell, we don't even have it on our bars. Bonus spirit. How does that work? That's the one. Well, shit, son. It works via the blood artisan titty protectors. By picking up blood orbs, we in turn spawn bonus spirit. Easy, huh? <laughs> Damn right. But we need some way to spawn these blood orbs. And that, my friends, we do via blood wave. <laughs> but we don't want to run around picking up the blood the orbs, titty do protector. We? That would be annoying. It's the female armor logic in games, guys. It works. Less, uh, showing more skin is more defense. As shit. It makes sense. It's magically And that's enhanced. when Blood Lance comes into play. By utilizing the Gore Quills aspect, you're picking them all up for free. Beautiful, huh? Yeah. So basically, spawn blood waves, pick up blood orbs, do big damn. That's the basics of it all. When it comes to scaling damage, that is done via the Blood Artists and Titty Protectors as well. This thing makes bonus spirit scale via max life, so we get a shit ton of it. For example, via the Coombringer. You then just spam out as many blood waves as possible and delete everything in the game. I think overall, this might be the only build that is coming even in the same universe as Spiritborn. It's just that easy, Bonus folks. Spirit. This build in particular could potentially be the strongest Necro build in Season 6 and even one of the absolute strongest builds in the game. Hell yeah, even man. though Blizz injected 10 liters of pure steroids straight up Spiritborn's asshole, and if it's not the strongest Necro build, then the next one will be the pure bonus spirit build. This thing was hitting for upwards of 30 billion last season, and it's not looking to change at all. While it may be one of the more boring builds out there... And, you know, this is what Holar Barbs used to look like before they giga nerfed it. Look here, like hitting for like 8 billion. This is Hoda Barb before all the nerfs. And they divided the damage of Hoda by 20. 12 billion here. And so it's properly dead. And now we have another like basically like number producing Hoda build on Necro. Sure but Bob can't it, have it anymore. Because it has been the strongest neckbeard build for three seasons now. And they keep buffing it. It was the strongest build, and they keep buffing Bone Spirit. Bone Spirit. massively sorry. buffed each fucking patch. <laughs> for this one in particular, you're now able to get double the damage from tempering, just as an example. And why is the build so broken in the first place? Well, shit. Due to three reasons. First, it has infinite damage stacking via the bonus spirit skill in itself secondly infinite damage. infinite damage scaling again via the ossified essence key passive no and third just humongous amounts of damage multipliers all over the goddamn place like brew the buffs to this build are probably the most out of place you could imagine either way it's all about maximum essence yeah, it's like this has been dominating the necrometa I think it's the fourth, fourth season now. And they keep buffing it every patch. And overpowers Baby. And all the other builds. I mean, now they buffed minions a bit, but it's still like not even close to this. The maximum essence speaks for itself. We just talked about it. When it comes to the overpowers, though, the build utilizes the Banished Lord's Talisman. By spending enough resources, you in turn overpower. And what happens when you have a buttload of Maximum Essence in this item? Damn right, overpowers each time you press the button. This is a massive damage scaling for the build, and it's one of the few builds that is even able to utilize overpowers, and it does it every hit El Mao. In any way, the main downside of the build is that it's boring as fuck for most players. It's a setup build, meaning you want to get enemies stacked up, pop a bone prison, and blast. It's also not really a good farming build. Like, you can't really speed farm with this. That's why people don't like it as much. I hope the minions are gonna be somewhere close. Then, you repeat. The second downside is that it takes a bit to set up the gear as it has some breakpoints to even work. It's not a startup build, But when guys. you get the build rolling, it's insanely you start rewarding minions. as you can feel every upgrade you get. And that, in a good way. For the next build, we have a fan favorite, the minion build. Fuck yeah, dude. It is making a return w. in this season is a w six. Change. It was goated as hell during season four, got massively nerfed in season five, and it's now back on the menu yet again. It's a roller coaster. There are buffs, buffs and all nerfs. over the place for minions, and you will have different variants that you can play. 
For example, the ring of Mendeln is now usable for minion builds. It's a good starter build. Other than that, the Kalen's Edict got massively buffed along with the cult leader. This, on top of all the other lovely buffs to the build, easily doubled its damage. The best part about this build, though, is how insanely easy it is to set up. You don't need a single... I'm starting Spirit Bjorn, and then I'm going to do some barb as well. But Spirit Bjorn is the number one class, and I'm going to play uh, it for like about a week. And then we'll check Barbarian and all the other stuff. Unique to blast with minions, you don't need to sort any breakpoints. Hell, you don't even need resources. Or a fucking brain Lamo. I typically run this build all the way from level one to end game, and then swap to another build once I get the required items. Minions is great. One of the main reasons as to why it is like this is how strong the aspects are and how minions scale, because they do inherit all of your stats, or well nearly all of them. This means that the stronger you get, the stronger your buddies get. Hell yeah. And each aspect and item upgrade you get, you'll feel it no doubt. Eagle Jaguar is the way, yep. The only real downside to the build is that it has no infinite scaling. This basically means that you'll cap out eventually. But you should be able to use these builds to clear nearly everything in the game, and you're also able to do it completely buzzed out of your mind seeing as you barely need to press a single button. Just lovely. Natural rocks. All right, and next up we have the budget spirit born, AKA the fat wood chopping guy. And the build that is looking to be the strongest is the landslider bear humper build. If you played season five, <laughs> then you're probably looking at this video with skepticism <laughs> right now because Stormslide got absolutely fucking gutted. No. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> but pure Landslider is, is still looking fine as hell. The build was great during Season 4. Received a... <laughs> oh, man. The budget spirit born. There it is, guys. The wood chopper, the fat wood chopper, a.k.a. The Refrigerator. Der Kühlschrank. Jetzt im Kino. 4x buff in season 5 and got some lovely buffs just now as well. Fortunately for you, the build is also extremely simple to understand. You press the landslide button and you deal damage. No convoluted mechanics or bugs necessary, you just blast. No bugs. We do actually need to scale it via a few excellent items and skills though. Daniel the main way to do that is via the Earthbreaker ring. By utilizing this, you've got yourself a build more or less allowing your damage to skyrocket. When it comes to the other skills, we're mainly using them to boost our damage and defensives. Poison Creeper is a particularly interesting skill, as we're not only using it to deal poison damage and gain a buttload of multipliers via it, but we are also able to spawn Daniel additional landslides yep. via Talking the subterranean you. aspect. We then reset the Poison Creeper via Pack Leader and so this is basically the AK-47 Druid, also in my tier list. Landslide, you're not using the Earthbreaker that much, you're basically uh, using direct casts now. Because in turn, have yet another way of spawning unlimited landslides. If you like to play the Fat Just Wood Chopper. lovely. The main problem with this build is that Landslide is expensive as shit. And Druid so you can't slow. just slap it onto your bars and start gaming. You do actually need some resource generation first. Fortunately for us, it's easier than ever to get it. So just follow a guide and you're Gucci my man or woman. I can recommend playing a trample slide build until you've got your gear set up properly. Next up on the agenda is the Big Daddy Boulder build. This is one of my personal favorite druid builds of- The only problem here, and you can see it in this gameplay, it constantly knocks back the enemies and you were like a melee guy. All time. Because so like, look at this, like you're like basically trying to kill these, but the monster just keeps uh, getting knocked away. Like, see, like he's like, uh, 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 I want to attack, and then and then he gets knocked again, and then he's shredding on it, and then he's getting knocked back again. It's like, oof, man. Dude, this is yet another build that got massively buffed in season five, and is getting additional buffs in season six. But it looks cool. And how does the build work? Well, shit, mainly via the metamorphic stone aspect turning boulder into a core skill and removing its cooldown. But it has a few extra important interactions. For starters, the build utilizes the Dolman Stone Amulet to make the flying ball sacks spin around you. The annoying part about this, though, is that boulder pushes enemies away, right? Yes! 
Yeah, but that's so changing annoying. in season six to make them push away enemies less and make the hits more reliable. It's gonna get this better. is a huge win for the fat woodchopper enjoyers and makes the build not fucking awful to play. Other than that, though, Are you a wood the main enjoyer? downside is that boulder is one expensive skill. Shocker, right? Yeah. So what you'll need to start gaming is basically a few uniques and resource generation. But once you have that up and running, you will blast, no doubt. Until then, though, just play Landslide, man. All right, yep. that's Fatty McFatty. Let's see what the Sorcerers has going for them. Quite a bit, actually. The fan-favorite Lightning Spear did indeed get a massive kick to the nuts, though, which was a sad time for all the Diablo 4 Why? enjoyers. But Blizz has to sell expansions, and we can't have a class stronger than Spiritborn, then, can we? That's right. Yeah. We can't. Either way, Lightning Spear is still looking to be the goat of sorcerer Spirit builds Spiritborn on number one. Assuming most of the bugs that were on the PTR has been removed. And how does it work for all the new dogshit newbies out there? It's rather simple. We have the splintering energy aspect, and we have lightning spear. I think it's still going to be the splintering insane, guys. energy aspect. Then scales its damage infinitely via crit damage, and you then have a build. Lovely. In season five, the build was completely broken though, so it got nerfed, and then nerfed again. There is now a again. cap on the amount of lightning spears you can keep out, but it still clears everything in the game. And how do you even spawn lightning spears? Well, that's rather easy too. You spawn them via frozen ball sacks and the winter glass amulet. So yes, you will need this unique before you play the build, but it will be worth it. Once you have it, you just throw out a few frozen ball sacks and everything explodes around you with ease, Arnie included. <laughs> Definitely a build that I recommend, oh as it's no joke, Not the one army, of the most man. fun builds I've ever played. Next up, we have yet <laughs> another Lurkin build. And this time, it's not frozen man. ball sacks, it's flaming hot ball sacks. This is not the strongest build in the game, but holy damn is it hey, fun Anthony. and visually appealing. And the build is also pretty visually appealing. <laughs> Yo, man, it is the same to me, dude. Earlier. It's all about fireballs in this build combined with the gloves of the Illuminator the and balls. Staff of Endless Rage. <laughs> By utilizing these, you're not only gaining bouncing fireballs via the gloves, but they are also shooting themselves out multiple times via the staff. Combine this with a lot of fire damage stacking and you have yourself an actual build. That's now, right. while the build does require two uniques to function, the build is apart from this insanely easy to gear for, and perhaps more importantly, even easier to play. All the skills on your Para bars are going to support element. you in defensives or damage, apart from teleport, which is a mobility skill. This basically means that the only thing you're actually doing to deal damage is run around and press the fireball button. It's a cool build. Making it the perfect brain dead boomer build. And for the last- This is for the boomers out there, boys. Us, I saved this one for last due to how oh, god awful it is. Not the barbarian. And it's the shit smearing barbarian. Ooh. This class is truly down bad right now, and it's not surprising. How the mighty have fallen. Surprising, really, seeing as all the builds got nerfed somewhere between a multiplier of 2x to around 50. Man, I mean, the moment I learned about this key passive nerf. I knew the class was pretty much done for for some time. Like, the key passive nerves were so crazy. The X. Yeah, that's right. And, and they keep nerfing it. Now, Bald Chieftain is getting a nerf. The Whirlwind is getting a nerf, man. Like, why can't we have a viable Whirlwind build, man? Come on. Under why the class is in shambles, Elamau. Either way, Ulf is still making great bar builds, and I'll link his Whirlwind build, which is still looking solid, or, well, at least Whirlwind is fun as hell. Solid, yeah. It works solely solid via the Solid is the, the dust brother of aspect, shit. And scaling Dust Devils as hard as possible. So they, this aspect, this aspect got a nerf. It works solely via you know, the before, Dust Devil aspect. Before you wanted to uh, spam your Whirlwind, you can't do that no more. It's the same for the two rail smite. You can't spam it, so it only procs like once in a blue moon. And scaling Dust Devils as hard as possible. There are not a lot of ways to do this in a meaningful way, 
unfortunately seeing as every good scaling passive was removed, but it's good enough. Meaning, if you want to push high with this build, then you are going to need a gazillion ubers Guys, and uniques. We'll try. We'll try. After we have played Spiritborn, we will try some Barb. We'll see how bad it is. But again, if you are playing Barb, you need at least like five Uber uniques before you can even dream of switching to Torment 4. And I think he's saying exactly this here as well. Like, Barbarian is weak, but it's only weak if you have Uber uniques. If you don't, then it's dog shit. Build. Then you are going to need a gazillion Ubers and uniques. The strongest way to play this build currently is to rock the Ramaladni's sword and spin to- And this weapon is bucked. Win with, with your dual-wield weapons. You'll then stack as much maximum fury as possible, along with the Locran's talisman, and enjoy a buttload of damage. Yeah, weapon throw is kind of decent, but you still need Ubers for it. There is a saving grace for this build, though, and that is Fists of Fate. This unique has been bugged, not working properly with Whirlwind. Maybe it's gonna work now. This is an insanely strong item for this build, and due to this bug, it was only really usable in the hordes. I don't know, man, how we have this bug for like one and a half seasons now. And not in the pit. But in the patch notes, this has supposedly been fixed, and that my friends could be just lovely. Maybe it's fixed. Assuming that it is fixed, we'll, we'll see. then this build should be blasting all content. I'm not no trusting problem. it yet until for I see it. For our final build of the day, I'm showing you an entirely new build. This is the Q tip barbarian. You're waxing or you're like cleaning all the ears of the monsters by throwing Q-tips at them. Look at the this. mighty throw shit smearer. This build does suffer the same problem as all the other bar builds, namely not being able to stack anything meaningful. But it is at least a weapon mastery skill, meaning we have some lovely high scaling aspects we can utilize. Fingers crossed it's fixed. Despite all of this though, it's looking to be a fairly strong build but perhaps more importantly, it got buffed a bit. It's insanely fun. You're just throwing yeah. out your mighty. Th I still prefer spin to win, but yeah, the Q-tip is okay. Throws all over the place and blow shit up. Now, mighty throw is a weapon mastery skill with a cooldown. So how does that work? How is it possible to spam it? Well, damn my man via the third blade, obviously. Once you have oh. this, which is insanely easy to obtain, by the way. You have yourself a build. Combine this with the new aspect Herculean spectacle, and you're dealing respectable Good damage video. on top of that Good as you're cool. hurling out Solid. way more of them. Now, I'm not entirely sure if I'll be rocking a barb this season, but if I do, then this is the build that I will be playing. Yo, rocking a barb. Let me know in the comments what you are starting, guys. We have a poll here. There are 6% of people rocking, I mean, rock. King a barb. You should make more like they are suffering in silence on the barb, but I don't think you can talk about rocking that much. We are rocking Spirit Bjorn. Three quarters, 75% of here. We will have a 20k votes, I believe, uh, here very soon, and I don't think the numbers will change much. Every, <laughs> well, three out of four persons, we are rocking Spirit Bjorn. Rocking the Bob. I mean, I don't know about that, though. All right, friends. That's all for this one. Sub for fuck's sake, and I'll see you in the next one. Sub to Para Gaming, man. I, initially, I thought he would really do the barbarian Action. this dirty. But not only that. Like from the start. Where was it? Where he's like throwing everything in the trash. Because spoilers, D4 is still a fucking game, and you can play games to have fun. Most so of these fun. builds are played in mid to end game, so you'll need to invest more time than just booting up the game before you can play them. Spirit Born is the We play. have a buttload of builds to go through, so let's head straight for everyone's favorite, the shit smearing barbarian. There it is. All right, done with that one. Let's take a look at <laughs> I really thought that would have been it. That would have been all that he talked about the barbarian. Like the just, shit smearing just barbarian. This. All right. Oh man, yeah guys, check out Para Gaming. It's a great video. I'll link it here. Leave a like. Leave us up. Most fun build to play. Yeah, we're gonna be... We're gonna be... 
rocking on the barbarian. We'll try it, guys. We'll try to suffer in silence. And maybe in Season 7 we can have something fun again. But the Spiritborn is amazing, guys. Lock in. Few hours left until launch. Let's go. Hope you enjoyed. GG. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like or a comment. I'm also live on Twitch almost every day, so come and say hi.